you are in sales. Even if your business card or your LinkedIn bio or your job description doesn't say salesperson, no matter who you are, you are selling every single day of your life. And if you aren't honing and consciously improving in your own sales skills, then you are leaving a lot on the table. You might be leaving behind promotions. You might be leaving behind getting your way. You might be leaving behind going to the restaurant of your choice that you want to go to versus the one your husband, your wife, your significant other wants to go to. Regardless of who you are or your description, you are in sales. And today we have an expert in the world of sales who sold many different products and whose career spans over 45 years doing just this one thing, which is selling. And today we're going to talk about how you can sell anything to anyone. We're going to be talking about the mindset of sales success with Sarah Phillips. This is the Be Better broadcast. And the only fee for you watching this broadcast is sharing this show with one friend. When you take away any piece of value, when you take away a new insight, a new technique, a new strategy, anything that helps you to think in a different way, or even if we made you smile, even if we made you laugh, we don't have sponsors. We don't have ads. We just want to bring you the information that will help you to improve your life and make it even more extraordinary. So without further ado, let's talk to our guest today, Sarah Phillips. And for those who don't know Sarah, Sarah is one of those people who feels that she was born to sell. She began her sales career at the age of nine. She realized that her friends at school wanted candy that they couldn't get, and she had parents who owned a store. She began buying candy wholesale and selling it for a profit at school. This continued throughout her school career, and she made enough money to pay her way through college doing it. She has spent over 45 years honing a successful sales career and is now helping others to do the same through her coaching business called Superior Performance Coaching. Sarah, it's a pleasure to have you here. Brandon, it is wonderful to be here. I am so excited to get to talk to you today. Same here, right back at you. And I got to start off with this. Let's get this straight. You were able to pay your way through college by selling candy while you were in school. Uh, candy, among other things. It started off with candy. Um, and then when I got into high school now, you know, this is dating me a bit. But back when I was young, um, you were allowed to smoke when you were a teenager. Mm. Um, most parents didn't allow it. Um, I, but again, I had parents who owned a store and I figured out that I could buy cigarettes wholesale. And I was the one and only outlet that the kids at school had for cigarettes. So I could charge whatever price I wanted to for them. And, um, so I, it just, you know, it wasn't somebody, something somebody told me. I just, I understood supply and demand. So yeah, I actually paid my for my entire college career simply through selling candy while I was at school. <laughs> that is one hell of a story because usually you don't realize that early on that you have this specific skill. You don't even a lot of people won't even register, "Oh, I have access to this thing that a lot of people want." So let me use and take advantage of this access so that I can help other people. And it's not you were doing it to make money, but you were doing it to help people at the same time. Yeah. You were doing it to get them the things that they wanted and at the same time you were charging for the effort that you put in to make that a reality. So I'm curious, and I ask everyone this who started at a very young age with their craft, where did this entrepreneurial spirit come from for you? Well, I was very blessed to be born into a family that they own businesses from the time that I was born. So I always knew for growing up, I had that living example in front of me that you can have anything you want in life if you are willing to serve other people and, you know, the, the reward that you get for serving other people is a financial gain. So um, I was very blessed to have that example in my life. You know, the one thing I noticed about you that's consistent through all of your messaging and all the other conversations that I've listened with you is you talk about sales from the viewpoint of it serving other people. If you bring, and I've done this many times, if there's 20 or 30 people in a room or more, and you ask somebody to describe a typical salesperson, 
the words that I end up writing on the flip chart are things like sleazy, they're shady, they're withholding information. They 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 say things out loud like commission and and in it for themselves and selfishness and it's always a shame that that just happens to be the archetype that a lot of people think about when they think of salesperson. Why do you believe based on your own experience people have this view of a salesperson? And when did you personally realize that it's about service and not about these different archetypes that other people label it as? Yeah, that's a great question, Brandon, because you're right. That is, um, and it is exactly why I started my coaching business, because you're right. That is the view that most people have of that. And the reason that they have that is because that's how people are trained in the sales industry. You know, they are trained that sales is an adversarial situation. I walk in to sell you something. You have money. I want it. One of us is going to win and one of us is going to lose. And that is how they learn the process of sales. That is totally opposite of the way that I have always viewed sales because I understand that my job in being there has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with helping you get what you want. When I walk in with the mindset that I am there to be your assistant buyer, then the first thing it does is we are no longer adversaries. We are partners. So it's a win-win situation right out of the gate. You know, we we are here to win together. Um, And as a result of that, first of all, I don't ever deal with rejection. You know, I tell Mm. people all the time, I will teach you how to sell without ever having rejection. Because if my aim is to help you get what you want, regardless of what choice you make at the end, you're going to be happy. Therefore, I win. And how does that work exactly? How can you sell something without being rejected? Because I come from the world of cell phone sales. I started in sales when I was 18 years old and I did very, very well in sales. And I will say I was rejected every single day. I would ask people and I got better with time, but I got better to the point where I wasn't rejected as much, but I kind of have an idea of where you're going to go with this. So I'm going to let you take the floor. So how can you sell without being rejected? Excellent question. And yeah, you're right. That is, and that is the reason that people don't go into sales. They're like, Oh, I can't handle rejection. Um, When the reality is if I, as I said, if I walk in and my entire goal, is for you to be happy when when I walk out the door or you walk out the door and you leave, whether you choose, for example, I also sell health insurance. If I come to you and my sole goal is to sell you my product, if you don't buy it, I lose. I get rejection. But if my whole goal is to go in and be your assistant buyer and help you make the very best choice for yourself and we choose a plan that I don't sell, I still win. It's not a rejection for me because my goal was to help you get what you want. And that's what I did. Therefore, I don't leave feeling bad. I feel living great about myself. Wow. That mindset, though, is so powerful because that at the same time takes away this fear of not selling enough, this fear of, am I going to reach my target? Am I going to reach my numbers? Let me tell you, one of the biggest transitions that I made was, you know, being someone who was in hundred percent commission sales. Like if you don't sell, just like you, if you don't sell policies, no one's paying you, right? You're paid based on you serving them, selling your product. My mindset changed and I, I easily 10 X my sales when it went from, I hope that I make sales today. I hope that people come into the store because I worked in retail sales. I hope that I get easy customers today. We used to always hear people say that, right? It switched to, you know what? I might have made $0 yesterday. I might have even made $0 two days in a row, but I'm not going to focus on that. I'm going to focus instead on doing my best to do good for the person across from me. I'm going to do my best to focus on that person to truly solve whatever problem they came in with. I'm going to help solve that. I'm going to ask them questions to discover if there's any other problems they have that they might not even consciously be aware of. And then I'm going to simply make a recommendation based off of that. Now, a lot of people, Sarah, they say things such as, wow, you know, I can't, 
I can't believe that you're in sales. You know, I would love to also do something where I could determine my own income. I would love to do something where I wasn't just hourly or salary. But, you know, it's just I'm not made for sales. Sales isn't for me. I've tried sales before. It didn't work. Do you believe that sales is for everybody? Because I have my opinion on this, but what are your thoughts? I believe that with the right mindset, anybody can sell. The reason that they don't want to sell is for exactly the two reasons that we brought out. Number one, they don't want to be that sleazy salesperson. They don't want to be perceived as pushy and salesy. Um, and the second reason is, is because they're afraid of rejection. They don't like rejection. They don't want to deal with it. Um, now, do I believe that that's what, that everybody is willing to do what it takes to overcome that? No, you know, nobody, nobody's, I, I'm not ever will, willing to overcome 12 years so that I can be a doctor, <laughs> but it doesn't mean I couldn't be if I chose to. The That's option fair. is there for me. And the option is there to be a salesperson if you're willing to put the work in to get it done. Um, so is it possible? Yes. Is it likely? No. Exactly. Yeah. And it really does come down to that mindset. You, I found that those who do best in sales are the ones who have the shortest term memory. Because even when you are serving, even when you're solving problems, you're still going to get told no when you recommend something that will solve a problem. And it, it can feel discouraging, right? We think back to the times in our early life where we were rejected, whether it's, you know, by a love interest that we had or a crush that we had in school and they told us no. And it's like PTSD from those early events in our life. So it can still sting, but that mindset of I'm going to do what's best for the person across from me, I'm going to do whatever I can in my power or with my products to help them succeed. That takes away a lot of that sting. Yeah. Let me ask you before I ask you specifically about goals and targets with sales. Aside from this mindset of me, 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 I need to sell, sell, sell. What else is the biggest perpetrator that is stopping many salespeople from operating at their potential, but is stopping them in their tracks when it comes to being successful in sales? They don't understand the value that they bring to the client. That's actually the very first workshop that I do with people. I do like just a hundred dollar workshop, just, you know, a very simple hour long discussion where I walk them through the true value that they bring to the clients and the fact that what you are providing for them is a much higher value than what you receive. So why are you worried about offering it to them? And I think that we get in our own way because we let the fact that we are going to receive money stop us from offering somebody something to somebody that they actually very badly need, that we are here to solve problems for them. But because we are gaining financial compensation for that, that it stops us and it shouldn't. It's, you know, it is a gift that we are offering to people. Um, and the reason that we make money for it is simply because we help them solve problems. So, you know, I'm going to ask you this, but could you give, can you give us a taste of what that hour long conversation looks like? to really extract the value that we're bringing to the table? Like, is it a specific question you have us ask ourselves? Is it a specific process? Like if you had to give us a taste of what that would look like, how would you help us discover that? Uh, well, it begins with me just asking you, okay, what is it that you do for a living? You know, having you describe to me what your thoughts are of what you do for people. And then I take you through a journey through those questions of it is just a series of about 10 or 15 questions where I take you on a self discovery tour of what you really offer, because unless we examine it, we don't understand what we are truly providing. Um, just to give you an example, I worked with a, um, a hypnotherapist mm. who, when I started talking with him, his perception was that he provided hypnotherapy 
um, to people who had problems in their life. By the time we got finished with the journey, when I asked him the second time at the end, what do you do for a living? He said, I help people get their lives back. Totally different perception, isn't it? It's totally different. You know, like even with what we do, we were trained for years and years not to focus on the product, but to focus on the result that that product would get for people. Like even a lot of coaches that I work with, a lot of coaches say things to people like, oh, I would love to be your coach. I would love to help coach you. And it's like, no one wants to pay for coaching. No one wants to even say that they need coaching, (laughs) right? People instead want, hey, I can help you to lose 30 pounds. I can help you to eliminate your debt. I can help you to increase your sales by 20% over the course of this next month. People want a specific result that you're going to get for them. And it's the same thing when people ask you what you do for work. A lot of people have a hard time, number one, talking about themselves, but number two, enunciating what it is they do. They'll say things like, oh, I'm a cell phone salesperson right? Or they'll say, I'm a life coach. Well, like you just said, what if instead you said, well, I connect people to their family members across the country so that they can have conversations from anywhere, right? Or I help people to live the best life possible using my unique process. It's about just, and then that also gets people to say, oh, wow, that's really interesting. Tell me more about that. That's right. And now they're asking you. Yeah. Well, it is, but you know, we have been raised in a world where all the focus is on features. Mm. The features are, you know, it's a flip phone or it's a slide phone or it's a, you know, whatever phone. That's not what people buy. What they buy is the benefits. Nobody, the way I always explain it to people is when you go to the store to buy a drill, do you want a drill? No, you want a hole in the wall. (laughs) quit talking to me about the drill talk to me about what this hole is going to do for me that's what people want it's it's such a simple twist of how you say something that makes the world of difference and it also makes you a lot more interesting in the process too and it separates you from other people like you might be specialized in helping people with a specific result than somebody else, yet you're both in the same industry. So in a sense, it gives you your 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 own unique selling proposition of what you can offer people. You are exactly right because I work in partnership with several other sales coaches. What they teach is process and how to handle objections and how to close. That's not what I deal with. That's not my area of speciality. What I'm going to do is teach you how to think differently about the sales process and learn to ask good questions to elicit the response. I'm all about the mindset. I'm not about mechanics of sales. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, the mindset really, if you, even if you have the mechanics with the mindset's not there, it's like you, you have a set of tools, but you've never actually been taught or trained how to actually use those tools. So you have the things there, but you, you don't actually have the operating power to put them to use. Yeah, you're exactly right. It's like having, um, you know, a drill, a saw, a hammer, nails, a nail gun, all of those things, but no knowledge of how to put the house together. Are you going to end up with a house? No. (laughs) (laughs) No. You know, so having the tools is great. So that's why I say I work in partnership with other sales coaches, because when I once I can get the mindset straight, then if they need techniques or things like that, then I can say, hey, you know what? That's not the area that I specialize in. Let me connect you with someone else who can help you with those things. Yeah, it, it's it's so important. And something else that I've noticed too, talking to a lot of different salespeople is they have no vision. They have no goals for what they want to achieve. You ask them, okay, well, you know, how did you do this month? Oh, you know, it was an okay month. And it's like, okay, well, what's your target for next month? Oh, I haven't really put a lot of thought behind it. I'd like to hit this. You ask them why they have no idea why they're just throwing on an empty number out there. So I kind of a two part question here, which we can really dissect both parts. How important is having specific targets? How important is having a goal? And the second part to this is going to be, well, how can we actually create those targets and goals? 
Uh, that's funny. That's one of my favorite. Uh, one of the things that you'll notice with me is I do what I call story selling. Um, because, you know, we all think in stories. And um, when you ask me about goals, it always brings the same story to mind. And and that's what do you uh, do you do archery at all? Brandon? I've, you know, dabbled in it. And I know people who do, but not technically no. OK, what if I told you that I was going to come up and I'm going to bring the world's greatest archer with me and I can guarantee you that you will outshoot him every single time after two minutes with me. What would you be pretty be? awesome? I, yeah, I wouldn't believe be awesome, you. I'd be right? like, how, how could I possibly do that being brand new? Yeah, exactly. So here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to put you out there with your bow and arrow and I'm going to let you shoot at the target. And then I'm going to get the world's greatest archer out there. And I'm going to put a blindfold on him, spin him around in a circle about four or five times and ask him to hit the target. <laughs> Right. Yeah. You're going to you're going to win every single time because he doesn't even know what he's shooting at. Wow. Now, doesn't matter how good you are at something. If you don't know what you're trying to hit, I can guarantee you, you ain't going to hit it. <laughs> what a story, by the way. I get this. I commend you for that because I've never heard that one before. But it's it's so freaking true. If you yep. if you're getting spun and most people are spinning. Most people have no idea what the target is. It's like they're afraid to create a target, but their inability to create one is what causes them to fall short in the first place. That's right. That's right. You know, like I said, if you don't know what you're trying to hit, I can guarantee you, you're not going to hit it. You know, if I said to you, okay, go out in the middle of Yankee stadium and pick one specific blade of grass, but I'm not going to tell you which one it is. <laughs> What's your chances of finding it? You know, you're going to be there for years trying to find this one blade of grass. So um, it is it it is one of the most important things you can do to have success in your life. And th as far as, you know, it is so important that it is one of the modules that I teach in my sales coaching is ex I actually walk them through the process of how to set a goal. But basically what it starts out is that you've got to know what you want five years from now. And then you're going to walk your way backwards to figure out what I need to do today to make that happen five years from now. But you got to start down the road. Most people try and do goals the other way around. Yeah. They say, what am I going to do today? And okay, so where is that going to take me five years from now? No, I don't want to know what I need to do today. What I want to know is where I want to be. You know, mm. if you get in a car in Albany, New York, and you want to drive to San Diego, you're going to get on a specific route. And with a GPS, which is your goal system, you may get off track a little bit here and there, but eventually you're going to get there because you have that GPS guiding you. But if you just get in your car and say, well, I want to go somewhere. What's the chances you're ever going to end up in San Diego? No, because you have no GPS. There is no guide to get you to where you want to be. Yeah. Well said. I, I love, and I just want to go back to it because it's so it's powerful. And I, I think anyone right now who's struggling to create goals, you're making it a lot harder than it has to be. It doesn't need to be using a specific smart system or yep. a different technique. It's it's literally a matter of not focusing on how many units you need to sell. You don't start there, right? I mean, That's if right. you did, you still might do better than someone who didn't set any goal at all. But imagine how much more pow powerful it would be if, if I asked you, paint a picture of the life that you will be living in five years. If you could have the ideal outcome, it, no matter what you ask for, it will come true, right? So be careful what you ask for. What would that look like? What would your home look like? What would your car look like? What would your day-to-day -day life look like? Because if you're in outside sales, you can really determine your own schedule in a way. Yep. So if you could do that, then what would you have to work on the days that you did work? What would, what would the hours be? And once you know that life, it's a lot easier to ask yourself, okay, so based on my compensation structure, based on the freedoms that I have here in this sales job or career, how many units must I sell in order to make this a reality? How many new customers will I have to enroll and, and follow up with and take care of over the course of these years? And how many referrals will I have to get 
what percentage based on all those past customers I helped, you're really able to pinpoint exactly what number you need. And then you can ask the beautiful question of where do I begin? How can I start? And then you just do step one, step two, step three, and you have a plan. And to everyone else around you, they're going to be looking at you like, whoa, they were made for this. They were built for this. Look at how focused. Wow. You know, Sarah, I wish I could be as focused as you are. And it's like, no, man, you could. You just have to decide what you want your life to look like in five years. Because if you don't decide, then your life is going to look very, very similar to the way that it looks right now. Yep. You are exactly right. Uh, you know, at the beginning of every month, I have, I, I make a poster. And on that poster, it is all of the things that I need to accomplish by the end of the month. So that as I sit down daily to write my daily activity list, I am looking at that poster saying, okay, I need to, by the end of the month, I need to have talked to X number of people. That means that today, to get to that, you know, this week, I need to get this many. And because I need to get to that many this week, then I need to get to this many today. And how do I accomplish that? It's very simple. Success is a step-by-step -step process. If you start at the end and work your way backwards, it's a very difficult process if you start with today and move forward. I like that. You create the vision. You have an idea of what that is, but every single month you track your progress. Even every week you can track your progress. But I like the idea of that poster board. So you update this every month. Do you write things on it? Like, is it like a whiteboard or do you actually put, put like pictures on this poster board? Um, I do a, a, a couple of things. I, it's actually, it's not a whiteboard. It's actually a poster board. I go buy a poster board because it's too easy to look at that board and say, oh, well, I've decided I really don't want that and erase it off. Much harder to do when you're on a piece of poster board. And I put up there, you know, this is the goal for this month. If there is a way to represent that pictorially, I will do that as well. But some things, there's no picture that goes with it. It's just, I want to create X you know, like, I, you know, mine for this month is that, you know, I'm in the middle of open enrollment period. So mm. I need to contact X number of people each week to assist them with their health insurance. There's no picture of that. But I know when I got up th t this morning that, OK, you know, I need to contact X number of people today. What does that look like translated into hourly activity? Yeah. And the beauty of that is you, the people who have a plan like that are able to accomplish in three hours what it takes other people eight hours or more to accomplish. It makes you look hyper productive simply because you have a plan and you have a target for that day, that week, that month that you want to accomplish. I tell people I'm aggressively lazy. <laughs> What does that mean? Tell me what that means. <laughs> it's exactly what you said, that I I would rather take eight hours the first day of the month to plan so that the rest of the month I can work four hours a day than I would work eight hours a day every day. And that's what that goal setting and the planning and knowing where I want to end up at the end of the month, that's what it allows me to do. It gives me the freedom to say, I don't need to work eight hours a day if this is what I want to accomplish. Now, if I want to accomplish more, then I can do that. But yeah, I am aggressively lazy. I, I work very hard to be lazy. I love that <laughs> phrase, by the way. And it's, it's a shameless phrase. It really is. Yeah. Because while you say you're aggressively lazy, other people look at you and you're like, but you're accomplishing 10 times more than, than I am or than what that person is. I used to always say, because it really painted a picture. I like that phrase. It paints a better picture. But I used to say, those at the bottom of the leaderboard are actually working harder than the people at the top of the leaderboard. Yep. They're okay. physically working harder. They're physically putting in more hours. They're experiencing more stress because they're at the bottom. And it's like, create the target, right? It's it's no before the day happens, what you're going to accomplish that day. It's like, stop, leave. Like it was a simple, like in retail sales that I came from, it was as simple as you don't leave the store. Like you bring your lunch versus leave to go get it. 
if you're an outside sales and you're you're physically like I work with several people who work with Aflac and they're physically driving to different locations. And I was talking to someone and they're like, well, I'll go here and then I'll go here. And it's like, why don't you schedule like 20 drops and put them on Google Maps and determine what is the most logical order for me to make these stops and then grab lunch when it logically makes sense. It's simply a matter of being productive with the time that you have. Yeah. It's like, make it easy for yourself. Don't make it harder than it has to be. Well, you know, it's funny because, you know, one of the things that I learned early on in my career was that it is super easy to be busy and totally non-productive. This is exactly what you say, that you're driving 10 miles across town to do something when just put it all together. Spend the time planning, you know, planning. People say, well, I don't, I don't have time to do that. Well, guess what? We all have 24 hours a day. That is mm -hmm. the one thing that everybody in the universe has totally equal. But look at the different results that people get with that 24 hours a day. Yeah. It's because those people who set goals and plan and know how to think about things get 10 times the productivity out of the same amount of time. Wow. You know, there's a reason that when you talk, um, one of our former presidents, and I'm not going to get into anything political, <laughs> um, but one of our former presidents on the top of being president of the United States read 10 books a month. Mm. You know, and I talk to people who say, well, I don't have time to read. Really? Okay. Um, so how did the president get more time than you? You know, it, 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 think about the, the weight that he has on his shoulders. He makes time. We make time for what's important in our lives. And, Absolutely. you know, when you think about it, when's the last time you said to somebody, I don't have time to brush my teeth? Never. You don't. Because it's important to me. It's important. So the question is, is how important are your goals? Have you ever sat down and had someone help you examine what do I really want? If I could have anything in life, if I had a magic wand and could create anything that I want in life, where would I want to be? See, for me, it was, I want to help people have a better life but I want to travel the world while I do it. Well, guess what? I created a world where that could happen, even though everybody told me it couldn't happen. Wow. So I, you know, you can literally have anything in this world that you want, because whether we like it or not, the world that we live in is the one that we created. Whether we realize it or not. The first time I heard that, someone said, you are exactly where you intended to be in life. And at the time, I was very broke and very overweight. And I was like, that is a lie. I did not want to be fat and unsuccessful. That is not what I wanted to be in life. She said, mm, you misunderstood my words. I never said that's what you wanted. What I said was what it was, what you intended, because your actions are what put you there. Wow. Mind totally blown. I am responsible for everything that I am right now. So if I am responsible for everything I am right now, then that means I'm also responsible for everything I am tomorrow. Who do I want to be tomorrow? I get the choice. Yeah. And the best time to start was yesterday, but the second best time to start is in this moment that you have right now, listening to this conversation, literally even right now, I wouldn't be offended if you pause this and you literally went and grabbed a book and asked yourself, where do I want to be in five years? It's so important to not even wait until the end of this conversation. It's so important yeah. for you to go do that right now. And like Sarah said, deconstruct it from that vision 
all the way back? And what would you have to do in order to travel the world while still earning an income, while still helping and serving people? It's simply like you said, you have a way of asking questions of the prospect and the client. It it comes down to we're selling ourselves just as much as we're selling other people with the questions that we ask ourselves to determine what we need, to determine what we want. The first person we ever sell and always sell is us. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. What are you selling yourself? Are you selling yourself a life of mediocrity? Uh, a life of, I wish I could, but I never will. Or are you selling yourself a life of, I can have anything I want. What do I want? Yeah, it's a beautiful question. I recently, in recent times here, discovered the power of intentional networking. And for someone who's been in sales for as long as you have, I can only imagine you discovered this long ago. And I'm curious to hear how important has networking been in your sales career and how do you go about networking today? Like, what does networking even look like to you now? Uh, networking has totally evolved. So let me tell you where I started networking to where I have come today and how I took that journey. I started off in networking doing what most people do when they go. I would go to a networking meeting and I would try and give everybody my business card and tell them all about me so that afterwards they would either say yeah i need your services right now or they would call me later and and you know life would be perfect and guess what i found out same thing y'all are finding out that doesn't work okay um i was blessed enough when i was in my early 20s to hear a gentleman speak by the name of bob berg i highly 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 recommend reading his book endless referrals it is a totally different concept of what networking is and what it should be. Networking is not about getting your business card in someone else's hand. Once again, networking is about serving. Mm -hmm. If you can create a life of service, let me give you an example. Brandon, you and I met at the party and we ca I came up and I said to you, hey, I sell health insurance here. Here's my card. Do you need health insurance? You say, no, I'm good. I get it through my job. And you go off and you talk to someone else. Do you ever remember who I am? No, no, no. no. Now, if I come up to you and I say, Brandon, hey, it's great to meet you. Tell me all about yourself. How long have you been doing that? What made you get started in that business? What's the best thing that's happened to you in the last five years in your industry? And I spend 10, 15, 20 minutes talking about you. What's the likelihood you're going to remember me? I'm totally going to remember you because that's very rare. Absolutely. Because everybody's favorite subject is themselves. Now, I'll tell you something else that you'll never get from me unless you ask for it. My business card. I don't mm. do it. I'm not there to get business. I am there to connect deeply with other human beings. Now I'm going to get yours so that I can follow up with you. If I hear something, if you tell me you love fishing and I see a great article on, um, you know, new lures or whatever, I'm going to have your information so that I can reach back out to you and say, Hey, Brandon, you said you love fishing. Uh, you know, I just thought I'd send this over to you because I thought that you might be able to use it. Or if you say to me, hey, you know, uh, you know, I'm doing so and so and I'm looking for a videographer. Well, guess what? I just met a videographer here at the party. Let me take you over and introduce you. When I leave you, do, yes, you talk about videography, but guess what else you talk about? You. The one thing you have in common. Me. <laughs> okay. I, I'm not doing it for that reason, but it happens naturally when you spend your life serving. So when I walk into a networking event, number one, my very first thing is I know when I walk in the door, how many people I am going to have a conversation with. I have a goal. I know what a mind blowing concept, right? Mm -hmm. Even for a networking event. I know I want to serve and speak to X number of people. 
so that when I walk out the door, I have information connection with X number of people that I can build a relationship because networking is truly when done correctly, it is about how do I help you? You know, one of my favorite questions and you'll see it in the Bob Berg book is how do I know if somebody would be a great prospect for you? What am I looking for, for you? Yeah. How, well, how who, who do you, want to connect? you know, who asked you that? What? <laughs> You're going to look for my prospects. Okay. <laughs> Let me ask you this too, because I'm curious as someone who is new to the networking game, I haven't met a ton of people. I've been intentionally doing this for, you know, four to five months and I met some incredible individuals, many of who I've had on the show. I don't always, it doesn't always register how I can help this person. And I don't always have someone who would be perfect for that person to meet. So if there isn't someone at the party, you can bring them over to. If something doesn't automatically register in your mind, then how is it that I can serve that person even if I don't immediately give someone to them or or help them in a specific way? Asking them questions. That is, you know, most people whether you help them or not, if you care enough to ask the question, my, my big question is always, you know, what are your plans in the next six months or whatever, you know, depending on who I'm talking to, what are your goals? And they'll tell me and I'll say, what could I possibly do that would support you in that? Now, oftentimes they will tell me something that I can do to support them, but sometimes they're like, well, you know, I really don't know. But simply the fact that I am willing to say to them, what can I do to support you? Mm. Makes a huge difference to people just to know that, hey, somebody cares about me. You know, I'm not out here by myself fighting this battle. So, so it no makes you memorable and different. But again, it's not about, those are the things that I do that make me memorable and different. But that's not why I do it. I do it because I truly want to serve other people. I want to know what can I do to help you get from where you are to where you want to be. It's total focus on the other person, which yeah. is fascinating because a lot of people, most people go to those events with the intention of how many business cards can I hand out? How many new clients can I enroll? I wonder if the person here will know someone who can help me. And it, it really, it's not because we're bad people. No. It's, it's that lizard brain. It's the part of us that's like, I need to survive. I need more clients. I need a direct result or return from this event. But a lot of the times, the real result that you get isn't something that you could have ever anticipated. Because it happens after you have an outward focus on serving that other person. And I will give you an example of that in the, the, the true sales world. You know, like I said, I sell health insurance and I sell private health insurance. Um, not everybody qualifies for it and not everybody, it's, it's not, you know, what everybody is looking for. But when I go in, my goal is to help them to get the very best plan for them. Now, with a lot of the subsidies, there are people out there who can get a plan for half of the price because they're getting an $800 a month subsidy. They're okay. I can find you a plan for $54 a month. That's going to meet your needs. Why would you want to pay 200? That doesn't even make sense. So I will help them get that plan. I spend as much or more time selling someone else's product as I do my own. Mm -hmm. Guess where all my referrals come from? Those people. Those people. <laughs> you know why? Because they trust me. They know that they can send their friends to me and I'm not just going to sell them my product. I am going to serve their friend the way they want their friends served. I am going to find out what is in their best interest and I'm going to get them to that. Wow. You know, in order to to make that move, you really can't be thinking about what you're lacking. You can't be thinking about losing. You have to really, truly be adopting that long-term mindset. Yeah. 
that's that's great. And I, I think there's been so many different gems in this conversation, so much for people to reflect off of. I'm going to, uh, let's give you a taste of your own medicine here. Tell me about, and I, you kind of did a little bit, but tell me exactly what you do now, Sarah. And I know you have a special offer for a conversation with those listening right now. So can you tell us a little bit about that? I do. So um, I, I've brought several gifts with me to offer to your clients today, to what to your audience today. Sorry, I didn't mean to say clients. Um, but what I do for people is I help sales people go in to a win-win situation so that they can improve every aspect of their lives. That is the bottom line. I help them to serve others so that they in turn serve themselves. Um, and as far as free offers go, first of all, it is open enrollment. I told you I sell health insurance um, uh, as an advisor. Um, I am more than happy to provide anybody in the audience um, a free advisory session. Let me let me come and take a look and and see you know what you're dealing with as far as health insurance, and I will point you in the direction that is going to serve your needs the best. Um, and uh, I, I think Brandon's going to share a link with you that you can book that. Um, the second offer that I have is I have created an ebook and it is tips for a successful salesperson. You can go, Brandon, and we'll also share the link with you for that. You can go and download that at my website. Um, it is, um, 10 great tips that will help you to create the sales career of your dreams. And then I am also more than happy to do a free 30 minute consultation with anyone who would like to have a conversation about where they are, where they'd like to be and what I can do to help support you in getting there. Um, can I connect you with somebody? Can I, you know, can I give you a book to read? Can I offer coaching services? Can I do whatever that I can do? So, um, and that can be look, booked in the exact same link. Um, it's going to say um, a complimentary consultation. Just be sure to put in the notes that you would like, to, whether you'd like to talk to me about health insurance or about sales. And I'm more than happy to provide both of those for you. I love that. Just like Sarah said, guys, links are in the description to both her ebook on being a highly successful salesperson and how you can do that. And if you liked this conversation, this was literally the tip of the iceberg to what you're going to find in the ebook. And it's absolutely it's the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what you're going to get with an actual conversation with Sarah. Like she said, she's offering a complimentary 30 minute conversation. Link is in the description so that you can network with her, add her to your network and use some of these practices to introduce her to someone that could help her with what she's doing, but also reciprocated back towards you. Sarah, this has been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for all the insights that you've learned through your experience and through helping so many other people. Brandon, it has been a pleasure. I thank you so much. First of all, I have loved getting to have a conversation with you, but most of all, I thank you for allowing me to serve your audience um, in some way. And I hope that everybody got at least one golden nugget that you can go out and make a huge difference in your life. So thank you so much. And I wish everybody a wonderful holiday season. Thank you so much. The pleasure is mine and right back at you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. There's many different golden nuggets from that conversation with Sarah Phillips. Again, you can schedule your 30 minute call with Sarah link in the description to do that, as well as grab your copy of her ebook. It's completely free. You enter your email, it gets sent right over to you, which will go deeper into these principles and will introduce you to many more principles to be a highly successful salesperson and to, to build a strong sales career. I mean, some of my big takeaways, just to say them quickly, is having a target. I loved the story that Sarah talked about with bringing the master archer versus someone who is brand new in archery. You, you know, you give the master archer a blindfold, you spin him around in a circle and tell him to shoot at the target. He's not going to be able to because he has no idea what that target is and he has no idea what direction the target is. Simply having an idea of what you want your life to look like in the next five years is so powerful because it allows you to deconstruct the goal from the outcome all the way back to where you are now 
to help you determine what you can do now in order to reach that goal. And my second takeaway, which is just as important as the first, is sales is truly about serving. Sales is truly about doing more for the person across from you, even if you're recommending them to a different person's product. It's about doing what's right for them because your referrals are going to come from the people that you refer to somebody else. I'm not saying refer everybody to to someone else, but if it's right for that person, then do the right thing. Doing the right thing will always result in a greater outcome for you. If you found any insight from this conversation with Sarah and myself, be sure to check out the links in the description and be sure to share this show with one friend who could also use this information or these insights. Thank you so much for watching. And until you and I talk again next time, continue to be better.